Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. And today we're going to take a look in on my European Nightcrawlers. Now these are my ones that I got from Gatano at Northeast Worms. These were about a pound of full-size adults, big ones. And today we're going to take a look in on them. It's been about a month. I'm just now catching up on all of my worm bins and so they've been about a month since they've had a feeding and maybe even a little bit more since you've seen a video so we're going to do a deep dive on these guys and see what they're doing first things first we're going to check out the condition of the bin you can really see a slope here where they have worked over the food and the bedding that was new the last time it was in here i won't expect to see much after a month but what we're going to do is we're going to see if there's any sort of plastic in here, anything on top that we might want to take a look at, and then we're going to get underneath of there, make sure it's all nice and fluffed up so there's air for the worms, for the microbes, so that there's no ammonia building up, etc. So first things first, let's look at the old end. Now these bins are done on a wedge method, which means that the most finished is over here. Now you can see this worm is going through what is called senescence. It is a full-size worm, but yet it's lost its clitellum, and it's probably in its last months of life. Uh, if you have not seen this before, it's pretty rare to catch it. That's why I bring it and show it to you right now. Um, this was probably a worm this long and probably almost as big around as my pinky. But as they go to the end of their life, they get a little skinnier and they also get shorter. And that's expected after a year or two, depending upon the kind of worm. So since these were very large adults last year, you know, one can assume that they are probably getting to be old age worms, at least the originals. So as I'm digging through here, I am seeing that the moisture is very, very damp. Now it's about 70% humidity in the basement right now. We've had a lot of rain and this is a dirt floor basement. So the humidity in here is probably equal to whatever it is outside. So it's not your normal basement. Okay, so these guys here, although they have not been fed, they look like good worms and you can see there's little babies there's cocoons in here so at least you know from a health standpoint they're doing pretty good of course they are going to get a good size feeding kind of an unusual feeding this time cc has moved from the same city as me and she cleaned out her cabinets and so we are getting a lot of dry goods and uh so i actually put them in water and puffed them up so the worms could uh, eat them a little easier. But we've got things like pasta, grains, etc. And um, still got the ginger. Can you believe that? I think we're going on like four or five months with the ginger in here. So I'm just going to fluff these guys up. As you can see, it is very wet. So after over a month having been not in here, this is really a necessity to make sure that this starts to dry out. I mean, I would like to get some castings out of here at some point. Here is a nice huge cat or a nice huge cocoon. The European night crawlers do have really huge, pretty cocoons. Usually they're the easiest to find for people who are new worm farmers. Because um, I know when I started out with, huh, look, cranberry, when I started out with the Uncle Jim's mix, the worms were so small, I think it was probably three, four, five months before I ever found my first cocoon, because they're so small. So if you're a new worm farmer and you're having a hard time finding cocoons, that's probably what it is. The worms are small, and as soon as they get a little bit bigger, you'll have an easier time finding them. All right, so we're getting into the middle section here that was probably fed three months ago and I'm seeing little things like cranberries who would have thought cranberries would last that long if you called cranberries as being a long-term food put that in the comments below um yeah I totally would not have guessed that so I'm gonna pop them when I find them 
I don't know if these were fresh or frozen. Uh, they were a donation from CC, but they have been in here for months and months, just like the ginger, which is finally getting soft. So we'll move the ginger as we find it and the cranberries towards the end. That is just crazy. I mean, cranberries, probably Christmas, right? All right, so we're getting into the part that was probably fed most recently. I'm just going to take the food and move it over. And uh, then that will give us a good area for us to feed this time. All right, so we're still, the, the ginger's finally starting to degrade. We wondered if it would grow, and uh, it did not. I'm not sure what conditions are great for for ginger, but um, or because it was frozen, it, it wasn't going to grow. I'm not sure. So we're just going to keep keep moving things over. It doesn't smell like ginger anymore, so that's definitely got to mean it's making progress, right? So look at that. They're living inside the ginger, kind of like when they have uh, corn cobs. So a little bit of a worm ball there. This is down where the most recent food was. I'll put a picture of that below. If you have any questions about my 55 gallon half barrels, uh, how, we, how we did that or how I like them, you know, put that in the comments below. I enjoy answering any questions that people may have. And um, I know that I relied very heavily on people that were experienced worm farmers when I was new. So feel free to do the same with me. Um, I know that some people are hesitant to ask questions because they think it's dumb or whatever. Um, but, you know, it's not. It's not completely, you know, it's not like you're born knowing how to take care of worms. So don't feel bad about asking questions. Even if it's a lot of questions, it's totally fine. I am glad to help and return the favor of the people who helped me so much when I got started. Okay, Ooh, look at that. Yay, good worms being cute for public. Being cute on the worm channel. Good job. So they look like all of the liquid started to drain towards this end of the bin. And that must have been where all the goodies were because that is where a lot of worms are. So that's great. I, you know, I was worried when I was gone, you know, did I feed them enough? And it looks like they did have enough food and enough bedding to keep them until I got home. So let's get them some more bedding. As you can tell, this is really well worked over. Let's get them some bedding and some food. Okay, this is my prepared bedding that's made out of shredded junk mail, shredded Amazon boxes, um, whatever shredded paper there is in the house. I do not uh, believe that, you know, bleached paper is a thing. I think that by the time that I make my prepared bedding and put water in it and it has a chance to rest, all of that will be gone. Um, you know, maybe 30 years ago when random chemicals were in paper, perhaps it would have been a problem, but I don't think it is anymore. Put your comments below. Are you a person that uh, still worries about the paper that you uh, feed your worms? Let me know. Now let me get you the food. Okay, so this is going to be some weird stuff. This is a mix of like pasta and grain. I'm not sure if you can see, I think they're wheat berries maybe. I'm not sure. I'm slightly concerned that this might ferment or something. There's even some nuts in here. There's some pasta. Um, so this is kind of a, a new thing for me. It is uh, definitely weird. I've not fed mixed nuts before or wheat berries. So we'll see how this works. But I'm going to cover it up. The worms have enough room. If it heats up or whatever, the worms have lots of real estate over here. They can get out of the way. Also going to put a good amount of paper on top of it because I don't want the worm apocalypse to return. Okay, there we go. So this particular um, bin has its own playlist. My European night crawlers have their own playlist. And if you want to uh, look at that, I can put that at the end. But wait, there's more. I'm going to do a whole nother bin of European nightcrawlers, so stay close. 
Um, but I wanted to let you know that there is a, if you want to go back and look at the beginning, um, I do have a playlist for that. If you're liking this video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. Okay, we're back. Now this is the bin that started out as 500 cocoons in 2019. And we also have not looked at this one in about a month. So look at these fabulous castings on top. They just do the most amazing job. Um, I know that uh, I have often said the red wig wigglers are the most versatile of the worms as far as temperature and food stock that you can feed them. But I do have to admit, the European night crawlers probably are my favorite. Um, I think that their castings probably are, you know, more consistent and um, much more the the porosity of it, if you know what I'm saying, like they're big enough that they don't ever seem to get sticky too much. Um, so that's probably why they're one of my favorites. So again, these guys haven't been looked in on in a month, so we are going to churn them up. The uh, European night crawlers don't seem to be fussed about that, you know, like whereas the blue worms really do not like being tampered with. They do tend to uh, crawl around quite a bit after you've uh, dug up the bin like this. The European night crawlers, at least the ones that I have, I don't have that problem. They, they tend to stay just fine. And look how big they are. I mean, now that they're in a good size bin, I'm seeing the size of the worms go up. So that was something that I had wondered would be true, is once they got into this half of a barrel, rather than a 10 gallon tub, you know, would I start seeing them get bigger? And I really do think I am. I'm seeing them pick up some size. Um, I'm just going to take the paper I skimmed off the top and put towards the area where it's going to need to be fed. So yeah, I'm seeing that they are picking some size up in here. The moisture in this bin is a lot better than the other bin. This bin had a lot more coconut coir in the um, the bedding to begin with, and so maybe that's why it's staying so nice and fluffy. So my prepared bedding is about 80% shredded cardboard and paper, and then about 20% coconut coir. But in the case of this bin, it's really more like 30%, because um, when I harvested these the first time, uh, they you know, the castings they were left with was really wet. So they did get quite a bit of coconut coir to start with, which is which is a good thing. It's kind of a, a longer term bedding. I think they eat it more slowly than they do the shredded paper. So I think because of that, it keeps it, gives it a little bit more structure and um, doesn't tend to compact, etc. They had a lot of pumpkins this year, so we're gonna be seeing those pumpkin stems for probably until this October when we give them new ones, maybe even longer. All right, so we're piling up all of this here. Last time we did a little bit of a harvest, but this time it is definitely too wet to do any kind of harvest. So we're just gonna pile things up here in the wedge and then uh, evaluate the food, if there's anything left. I think they had some tomatoes or something in with their bedding and whatnot. I'll put a picture below. Uh, let me know if you've ever started a bin with just cocoons and how did that turn out as far as the evolution of the bin? Did the worms sit, stay smaller or did they get just as big? I know that people who have commercial wormeries, they have their special, you know, things that they do for their food and whatnot you know, that does help get them bulked up. But for us regular people that just do this to uh, rescue things from the landfill, have you ever started anything from just cocoons? Um, did, you know, did everything turn out how you wanted? Because I think these guys are doing just fine. They've got a little bit of food left. Even after a month, there's a little bit of a lime. So I think that the uh, large feeding I gave them, ooh, sweet, what good worms! European night crawlers are the best. Look at that. Good worms. And they are also getting into their ginger. Looks like they've got, there's probably, I don't know, a quarter pound of worms right there in the bottom. 
And like I said, these slope this way, so any sort of uh, food juice that settles in the bin will settle down towards this bottom portion here. All right, so let's stack up this middle portion here and make room for today's feeding. Such good worms. You guys deserve some super awesome food. All right, well, let's see, still stacking. This is about a foot deep um, here at this end. And, you know, usually the starter end down here is probably about six inches, eight inches. So let's get them some new bedding. So they turned all the Amazon boxes and shredded paper into castings in a month. I'll put below a picture of how much bedding we gave them last time. But uh, you can really see this used to look like that a month ago. Isn't that amazing? Um, the bin and the worms and all the little critters, they just, they're just amazing. I think I've calculated that I save about five tons of food from the landfill, whether it be from work or from home or my friends, every year. And just imagine if everybody did that, um, we could really make a difference as far as, you know, dotting our landscape with, you know, landfills and, and all of that. But I will get off of my step stool and go find them some food. They are going to get the same thing as the other European night crawlers. They're going to get this mix of pasta and grains that I got from Cece. This looks to be a little bit more heavy on nuts. And, oh, I think that's a date maybe? I've never fed those before either. So this is kind of an unintentional experiment. Yeah, those are dates. Um, everything was expired by years. So I just put water in it, put it all together, and then once it had puffed up, I put it in the freezer just to kill any uh, random bugs that might have been taking part in uh, super old, you know, dry goods. Okay, so now they're gonna get some bedding. What do you think? How long is it going to take for those mixed nuts? Because they're not, you know, cut up or anything. They're just normal mixed nuts. How long do you think it's going to take for those to go away? Put that in the comment below. Okay, looks like I need to make more bedding. All right, that should do it. And again, if anything weird happens with that grain and with the, the random things that's in there, they can always come back up here and be just fine. They can get away from it. Okay, so, like I said before, European Nightcrawlers have their own playlist over here, and if you want to look back and see what we did last time, I will put the European Nightcrawler feeding from before over here. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.